In this lesson, I'm going to be covering entry forms. And entry forms are the forms on a specific record that you are able to help organize in a more efficient manner for your employees to be able to enter in the right data that they need to and not be cluttered with a bunch of different other fields that are unnecessary for them to be seen. So if I go into a customer record, here's just a random one. You can see that there's different types of fields on this entire customer record. There's different sub tabs available with different fields within each sub tab. There's also these call to action buttons like accept payment. And there's also this drop downs with actions. So this entire page can be customized specific to your business so that let's say you are a salesperson working with your CRM maybe. Um, you might only care about certain aspects of the data maybe um, maybe just the first name, last name, you know, phone number. You don't really care about some of the other things that you may have set up in your system for, for a specific role or for a particular person. So you're going to make a custom form to cater towards that. And, you know, that form may have some hidden fields removed. You may have this home phone. You may say, hey, I don't really care about this anymore. So let's not even have it on this form at all um, for one person, for one role. Um, and then you may have it available for someone else to enter in because it's more applicable to their role. Okay, so that's what an entry form is. And there's lots of customizations we can do to it. So I'm going to dive into some of those customizations and how you can access it. There's a couple places that you can get to create an, an entry form. If I click edit on the record, go over here to customize and then customize form. That will take me to an entry form. Or the other way is often the one I prefer. Uh, just I like to keep same processes as much as I can. I go to forms and then entry forms. There's also transaction forms. For a customer record, it is an entity. So we are going to have to be an entry form. It is not a transaction, obviously. So uh, that's why we're not going into here. There's some differences, but a lot of the processes are the same and the concepts are the same, but they might have some different check boxes or some different, different things that you can look in sweet answers to really get the key differences. But you know, if you know how to make an entry form, you're going to figure out how to do a transaction form pretty easily. So we're going to go into entry form because we are working on the customer record and I'm going to look for customer because this is going to have all the different types of records. Here's an employee record, inventory parts, employee record, right? And if you look over here, we see customize and edit. If it has edit, that means that this is a customized form. If it says customize next to it, that means that it is the native form. And really what's gonna happen when you click this is it's gonna save a copy of that form. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and click customize next to the standard customer form. And it looks like this form is the preferred one over here. Yeah, right here. This is the preferred one so far. You can only have um, one preferred one per subtype, per type. Um, so that's why you can see that there's two different preferred ones here. There's It says customer, but it's, it's actually for a different subtype. Right. And we'll, we'll talk about the preferred forms in a second. But let's go ahead and customize this. All right, now what it did is just saved a copy of that other form and we're gonna call it our custom tutorial customer form. And you can make an ID if you want. Any of the IDs, I like to start with an underscore otherwise, because uh, there's always a prefix. Let's talk about some of these checkboxes. Enable field editing on lists is something that you can do to help inline editing of your of your view. So let's go to my customer list right here. See this, how I can check this back and forth for editing. So you can edit in this view if you have that checked for the preferred form. And right now, I don't believe yep, this one is. You can see how you could, there's some fields that you'd be able to change. The store form with record means that it'll create an, an association or a link between the form used by the employee and the data that was entered. And that can be useful if you want to know the, the exact form that was being used for a specific data entry. 
Form is preferred. That's that checkbox that we saw before on that other list where it says preferred. And that is going to be what you're going to be wanting as well if you want to have that uh, inline editing. Uh, you need to make sure the preferred form would have that. Use for pop-ups. Pop-ups are for little little small pop-ups on the form. And I'll, I'll show you an example real quick of that. Right now I'm within a vendor record, so it's a little different than the customer record. But if I were to go over here to new contact within relationships, this is what a pop-up would be. And it would have a certain type of information that you would need instead. So it's a, a little less information than if I were to go to the actual contact form. And you can say that this form could be used only for a pop-up as well if you were just trying to create a form only for a pop-up form. So sometimes people like to do that, to have one form for their, their standard one and then a different form for a pop-up. So pop-ups are more used for like a quick entry. When looking at organizing the data, you can organize the data in different ways. You can group different fields together or you can start grouping fields together underneath different sub tabs. If I look at the customer record, this is what I mean by it. So here's a, a grouping of, of fields right here. So I've got primary information and I've, it's already kind of expanded out into, into this spot. Or you can start to organize it underneath the sub tabs. And as always, you can expand all the sub tabs out so that you can do a, you know, a control F and find a specific field. And so that's not a problem. You can still ac access that information similar to this, but it may help with your overall organization of the data to make it a little bit quicker to access information. Okay, so let's go look at what that sub tab would look like. Let's say that you wanted to create a new sub tab. Well, you can do that. So I'm going to go over to customization forms and I'm just going to click on sub tabs. And under here, you can see that there's the different types of forms. We got transaction and entity. And then they also split out item record and some of your CRM. We are on an entity form because we are on a customer form. So this is one of the ones that were added, a sub tab that was added into this. But it looks like it came from a bundle. And if we go back into the customer, we can see that sweet commerce extension sub tab right here. Okay, the rest of them come in kind of native. Let's go back into this form. So at least we know how to make new sub tabs if you want to. Now you can also organize the data underneath of each one of those sub tabs. Within each of the sub tabs, you can have also have sub lists, which is kind of further breaking down the information a little bit more to help organize that. And we're going to go over to sub lists. It, what it breaks down each of these sub tabs a little bit more. Um, the main section is everything above the sub tabs. Otherwise, Everything will correlate how it appears. Relationships, communication, address, right? Relationships, communication, address. I'm gonna go into the communication underneath the sub list so that you can see what I'm gonna be looking at here. Now you'll notice that there's only four sub lists underneath of here, but there's quite a few sub lists here. And that's because some are checked as show and some are checked as not showing. To get certain fields underneath each of the sub lists or sub tabs, then you would just go into your fields and then you go navigate to one of these, right? So if I wanted to add something under relationships right here, then I would have to add it, the field right here, okay? And you could create new fields here if you would like to, there's also a different way you can go to customization list records fields and then create your, in this case, an entity field. Let's just look at the marketing sub tab so that we can dive into this a little bit more in detail. You'll notice that there's this field grouping that says lead information and then there's lead source, web lead and source website. Okay, so how does that information get displayed? It's similar to up here, right? It's a, a field group. So we're gonna go under marketing and you can see that lead source, the web lead, the source website, we have them set to show and we have the display as normal, that's fine. And we've created a label. And then this right here, this is the field group and that's how you assign this type of header underneath the field group. And that's where this is created right under here. You can create more field groups. If you go over here, you can assign different field groups. So if I go to marketing, that's where these were created initially. If I wanted to add that primary information, this up here, 
Or let's say I wanted something above all the sub tabs that might say like my, my business information or, or something like that. Well then I would go into the main section and add in my business information, okay? And I would have it show and, and, and call it good. And then what I can do is I can call that out underneath some of the fields and I can add fields underneath it to that. So if I go to main and if I wanted to add another field or you know what, let's say I want to shift some information, um, maybe the, the parent company name. I don't want in primary information. I want in my business information. Okay. So that's how you would kind of shift things around. You can also move fields within each of these sub tabs or the main section too. Uh, I could go into the, the marketing and I have to click on it first and then just shift it around like that. Actions are another part that you can customize. Most of the time, these are not often customized uh, or there might be small modifications. Normally, that's new fields being added and organized onto the forms, but all the buttons that are available, this accept payment, all the actions underneath here. So you can see that we've got standard actions and custom actions. So we're just gonna talk about standard actions for now, that accept payment button that's at the top and it's a button, right? So you can define where things are located. There is also the save and next buttons at the bottom. I'm gonna click edit. And if I just go like this, see that save and new, save and next. Don't worry about that error. All right, that's, those are where those buttons are coming from. So this part right here, this show activity, even this is available right there, right? Show activity menu, right? View all transactions menu. So all that information right there. So I'm gonna go back into the fields here just to show you a few more things. So a field group is what is gonna show up here as a kind of like a header and where you can group different types of fields within them. And then you're gonna have sub tabs, which are down here and sub lists within each of those. For instance, these are sub lists down here. Okay, and you can have also your field groups within a sub list or within a sub tab, and that can help you further you know, clarify some of your information and organize it. We haven't really gone over the last couple pieces of this, and that's the quick view. Um, not a big deal. I'm not going to go into depth on this, but very high level. Uh, here's a sweet answer article on it. This is what a, a quick view would look like. So see how it shows customer ID, status, sales rep when I were to hover over a customer name, that's what the, that's what would show, right? So it's telling you, okay, we're working on a customer record. Whenever there's a link like this on a different record, you can quick view the essential information and define what that is. Pretty straightforward. You know, you probably are just gonna go with a lot of the default. You might add in maybe a different cell phone number maybe, or maybe there's a, a contact within that customer. Custom code. This is more for developers. Uh, typically developers just kind of call out the, um, if they need to specify just for a, a particular custom form to do something. But it, this is specifically for client scripts. If you are a developer, you can configure your client scripts within here to only apply to a certain form if you need. And then roles, this is who has access to this particular form. Obviously there's a lot of roles available right now but some people you only want certain types of roles to be able to access a particular form. And that's totally okay. So let's go on to the customer record to see how we actually get this form that we just created onto that customer record showing up. First of all, I'm just gonna click save. Now I'm gonna go into that customer list. I kinda wanna just make it my preferred now so you can see what that looks like. So custom tutorial form, okay. It's gonna change the one right above it. Perfect. I'm going to click submit. And now I'm just going to go back into my customers. We can still inline edit because we had that selected. I'm going to actually select my name here. And you can see that now we have my business information. That was one that we had added with company name information underneath of it. And we had also done some other things um, in organizing some data, but that, you know, we didn't do too much. I mostly kind of just showed you what it would look like and, and explain it out. 
but you can, if I click edit on this, to define which form you're gonna use is right here. So it defaulted, and you can select other forms that I've had. A lot of times people will hide this field. So if you only want a particular role to access something, or you don't want them to be able to toggle between different forms, then you can hide this custom form selection on the customer record. And that'll make it so people don't have the ability to change things that, or even have access to different types of um, fields that may, they may not need. Well, there we have it. We have pretty much covered everything we need to know about entry forms and how to organize the data a little bit more. Feel free to comment below on this page for, to ask more questions and get more clarifications if you need to, or even give different ideas for how you think this course could be improved or different lessons that you want to learn in, in greater depth too. So we're happy to help. We try to have the heart of a teacher whenever we can, and usually that is always. <laughs> so hopefully you, you like this. If you did, feel free to share it with people too.